What up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dustin'sFishTanks.com, bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. Special Sunday today. 420 Easter Sunday today. Hope everybody's doing well, uh, having a good time, hanging out with their family, and whatever else you're up to today. It's Sunday. I'm excited. I'm, I'm always excited because life's great and you all should be excited. It's springtime. It's beautiful. I'm excited today because I've got a great video in store for you. It's Species Sunday, but I want to take a step back before we get into species. And I'm actually going to do a little series for you all. I'm going to do a series on how to set up uh, a low-tech planted tank. I'm real excited about it. It's going to be a three-part series. So today is part one. Um, and we're going to get into it. I want to talk today about the size of your tank, um, the stand, what kind of uh, substrates you're going to use, and I want to talk about hardscapes today. And then in the next video, I'm going to talk about lighting and plants, uh, aquascaping, and then in the final video, I'm going to talk about uh, maintenance, put, kind of putting it all together and tweaking it. And uh, yeah, then you also really have a pretty sharp looking tank. So we will get it rolling here. Um, for starters, I want to talk about the size of the tank, okay? I think this is important just from the onset. You're, you're starting out, you're like, okay, dude, what am I going to do? How am I going to set this up? What size tank you got? Well, there's a couple of things to consider. First and foremost is budget. What can you afford? They might have a dollar per gallon sale, but I can assure you that's brilliant marketing because you can go ahead and spend a hundred bucks on a hundred gallon aquarium, but then you got to fill it up. The most brilliant thing I've ever seen was when Pet Supplies Plus used to do the $2 uh, 10 gallon sale. I was victim of it and I bought a 10 gallon and you gotta buy everything that goes in it. So um, select something that falls within your budget. Uh, I have a new guide coming out relatively soon, uh, but that goes into all this in more detail. But basically, yeah, figure out what your budget is ahead of time. Don't just buy a big tank and then say, I gotta fill it up. For instance, me personally, I had the 220 that I got for 500 bucks downstairs. However, I had to go and drop instantly another 250 bucks on lights. That doesn't include any sort of, you know, filtration or any of that stuff. So, um, you know, kind of have your budget figured out before you jump in. Um, also, you want to figure out the size of the tank. You're looking at what kind of uh, fish are you going to put in there? Are they out going to out going to outgrow the tank, or are they going to be just fine? Um, and I want to talk about this tank here, and then I want to talk about its stand. Um, this is a, I, I guess it's a 39, I call it a 40 tall, so excuse me for the lack of details if it is in fact a 39, I don't care. I've always been a big fan of these, and I talk about this in the guide. I love this tank because it's got that like big viewing area, um, tall and then wide, it's 29 plus a couple of inches. So it can fit on a, a standard stand, it's got a lot of uh, gallons. One of the things it doesn't have though is a lot of surface area. You like a lot of gas exchange, so some of those like tw 20 longs and all that have good gas exchange uh, compared to the amount of uh, gallons of water they have. Same thing with like a 125, big long footprint, open, lots of gas exchange. So that's one of the things this is lacking. Uh, however, I'll be running an air stone, so that doesn't much matter. So. Um, this 40 high is actually Steve's. I uh, gave it to me. It's been looking great. It's been looking terrible. And now it's back to nothing. So uh, I'm excited to be setting it up here. I went with the 40 high and I want to talk about this stand here because this stand was built for me by a guy named Wayne. Any of you guys go to Ohio University, you should anyway. Uh, it is, uh, has, a, has a store. I hope it's still there. It's called the Beach House. It's way up, I want to say Richmond Road or not Richmond Road. Uh, way up, way up, almost like on your way to Pomeroy or whatever. So a place called Beach House. He built this stand for me, and I want to make a note about this stand because it's custom built. At one point in its day, it actually looked pretty good, but this stand was built uh, for me at a specific height because what I was going for at the time in college, surprise, surprise, I had two tanks. I had a uh, 40, I had the 40 tall, and then I had a 29, and the 29 sat about this tall. So I wanted to make sure that I had the 40 tall and the 29 at the same level here. So I wanted them to be at the same eye height so you could like look at one and then it would go and you'd look at both. So this stand was built intentionally low and I think that's important. The number one thing with the stand obviously, you want the stand to be able to hold the tank. I mean, you know, a water, I think a gallon of water weighs about eight pounds, something like that. Um, you get, you know, so it's gonna be able to hold a lot of weight uh, with a 40 gallon tank, you know, not too, not too bad here. But this is a pretty beefy stand. Um, that, that you know, I've used in the past and I know will work well. Another thing that you want to make sure with the stand is you want to make sure that the stand is level here. And I have a level around here somewhere. 
that you can see. You want the stand to be level, level, level. And it's very important, and it's worth buying a level or borrowing a level, because when the stand isn't level, you're going to ultimately put too much stress on the, the seams of the tank, uh, and eventually it will leak, okay? People can say, oh, no, it won't leak, it's level. Trust me, I'm the most quick hit dude you've ever met, okay? You see how much I edit the videos. Found the level. Um, so you want to make sure it sits level. So this tank sits, I don't know if you can see this, it sits level, it's sitting good. This is important, okay? Ask me how I know about unlevel tanks. In my old office, I had a 55 gallon tank that I bought used, that I had on a stand that was kind of bush leak, and the, the, the stand sat unlevel, the water level sat unlevel, I saw it unlevel, and I didn't care. It ultimately started to leak, okay? And that 55 is sitting on the other side of my greenhouse right now, uh, collecting mosquito larvae. So, definitely want to make sure that your tank is level. Um, that's an important thing. Go level. This way it's level. Okay, good. This way it's level. I'm good. I I'm not an expert at leveling tanks, but I will say that, you know, check it from a couple of different angles. Also, you want to make sure um, that the stand is level and you want to make sure that the uh, Excuse me, this, the stand is level, and you also um, want to see if it's not level, you want to make sure that you can like shim it so you can put little like slivers of uh, wood underneath it to shim it to make it level. So make sure you make it level uh, and, and shim it up here. The other thing about a stand is, is it, <laughs> does it look, you just stand up like shit. I mean, let's be honest here. This stand looks like crap. At one point, it was a beautiful stand. You can see this, um, these little like nail things, whatever. These were little like small nails tacked in, and I had a black like curtain kind of around it that made it look a little better. Um, there's a couple of things on uh, the stand looks bad. One is if you're trying to impress, um, you know, wife, girlfriend, whatever, um, they're going to look at the stand. Um, for me, if you're looking at the stand, you're not looking at the tank. And if you're not looking at the tank, something's wrong in the tank, that means I don't have a good look at the tank. So if you're like, oh, that stand looks like crap, then you're, you're spending way too much time looking at this, the stand. Um, when you should be looking at the tank, the tank looks like crap. You got bigger issues in the stand. So uh, I say that, however, you know, my wife wants me to have a real nice looking stand in the, in the family room, and I can't blame her for that. Um, so just something to consider there. Uh, ways to do that, uh, like I was saying, you can do a, uh, a thing around the bottom here. Like I used some black cloth that was tacked in there, and it was nice and kind of hit everything and made you kind of focus on the tank. You could also put a front doors on here, depending on how crafty you are. Uh, some of y'all, by the way, I've seen some of your tanks, some really cool looking stands. They kind of hide everything. And then the other part about the stand, uh, and it's a nice segue into the next part of this, is what are you going to put under it here? So for me, I'm going to segue from stands to filtration, and it'll tie back in here. I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do to filter this tank? One of my first options was a wonderful canister by our friends at Blue Ball. Um, and it's great, and it looks like it will fit, but it won't because when you put the attachment on it, uh, when you put the return flow piece, this right here, this is ultimately no bueno, so that's not going to work. So that is out, um, but that's okay because I'm a filter collecting whore, and I happen to have a Whisper 60 from 1985. Actually, it's probably more like 95, but whatever. Great, great filter. I'm going to go with this. Uh, lots of flow, probably uh, more than enough flow, for, more than enough filtration for this. And I'm actually just going to use the hang on back. What I like about these two is you can get these uh, down tubes that can extend. So this can get way down into the bottom of a 40 gallon tank. So this will be my filter of choice for this tank. Um, I want to talk about this background too. I've actually put this on here so you guys can see um, just uh, like my focus is on this. And I had a problem with this in the 220 in the basement. At one point, you all know, longtime subscribers, thank you for your subscription, by the way. Um, we'll recall I had the 220, the 90, and 475s in the uh, basement, and my focus was was gone. I had, you know, a little, I'd tweak a little bit with the 20, and I'd tweak a little bit with the 10, and I, you know, and then I'd have all the 75. So I was always tweaking a little bit. I never, like, had, like, core focus on one tank. So I'm doing this for focus of the video, <coughs> but I also uh, think it's important, too, like, you know, if you have like multi tanks, like set the one tank aside and really just give that tank the love. Get it away from your other tanks so you can really, really focus in on it and kind of take a look. I've also done it so you can see more def definition behind uh, what I'm about to put in here. Um, I do want to touch briefly on substrate. You all can buy the dirty tank guide if you haven't already picked that up with the link below. But uh, the substrate, I am using dirt here. Uh, I've capped it with pool filter sand and uh, I'm going to roll with that. 
Uh, a couple of things I do want to point out. I talk, talk about this extensively in the Dirt and Tank Guide. I have actually the dirt a little too visible here. Now is the time to really clean this up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, scrape this. I'm just going to push this down a little bit. So just shove the dirt down. So you don't have to see that from the front. Some people don't like to look at that. So I'm just going to shove that down. Uh, and don't be afraid to throw away some sand if it does get like dirt near. This is dried out. Dirting a tank, there's a whole process of it. Uh, it's outside the scope of this video, what I'm trying to do. But you can see I'm, uh, I'm pushing this down here. Gives you a little cleaner edge here um, instead of having this, this gunk here, which will eventually look like crap. So go ahead and do that um, with your substrate out of the gate if you're dirted. Um, the, other, the, 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 the final thing I want to talk about today is the materials you're going to put into the tank. I think this is really, you know, you can do, you can change your filters, you can change your light, but the, the tank is made, and you see some of these amazing aquascapes. The hardscape is the hard part. So you really want to nail that out of the gate and, and have that be your focus, because that everything is going to kind of pivot around that. Uh, you could certainly tweak it, but everything is going to kind of evolve around the hardscape. So I find um, that this is a part that you really can't rush and you're really going to want to play with, put things in places and then let them be. Uh, Brian and I have discussed this, as is Steve, about how um, I will go and I will, I will mess with it and then I'll, I'll walk away, I'll leave it alone and then I'll come back to it. Like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in here, I'm going to take a look and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to come back later and I'm like, you know, that kind of, I don't like that there, I need to adjust this. Um, some of you guys that are on the Dustin's uh, Facebook fan page, uh, check that out. If you're on there, give me a like. Uh, I showed a picture uh, on Friday about what I was doing and I was playing with some of this stuff. Actually, it was the inspiration for this video. I was just out here hanging out on a Friday and I was like, yeah, I can show this. So um, I started playing with the hardscape and I realized, you know, I didn't really like it with two. I had like two things in here. So I'm going to show what I'm working with here. I have a couple of things going on. I've got all this driftwood here you can see and these are small pieces um, that I have. Now obviously I have more driftwood than the average bear because I collected about as much as I collect filters. But I've got all of these here. I've also got some big boys here. So I, I like this big, this was a, a piece I found on a beach in Peru. So, you know, I, I, whether I ever use it in the tank or not, it's never going anywhere, that's for sure. But, um, sentimental attachment, can you tell? So anyway, this piece might be used. Uh, I love the angle of it. I love the character of it. Uh, I love the memories behind it. And um, I, I could possibly use it. <laughs> Some of the things it could go with. Um, I like I like a little action like this, but that doesn't really show enough of the character, so maybe it's on, maybe it comes this way. And then with these, you can, uh, you know, you can really like mess with the, uh, I like that actually. You could put a rock or another piece of driftwood um, behind it to kind of hold it up. And I'm just, just kind of freestyling that there. But with the hardscape, you can use rocks behind it um, one of the benefits of dirt, you can actually shove the weight out in there more. With this hardscape, I don't want this to come really uh, out the top of this tank. I actually want it to be a couple inches below because I like the height that it will give you um, with that. So I'm playing with this one. Um, I've also got, oh, I also want to say um, I want to like draw this into kind of a thirds here. So I would have this is a third and then the two thirds here. Um, with the design flow, so you can kind of see that uh, from a design perspective. I also want to show this piece of driftwood right here, which I've always thought is cool. This is a Brian Campbell Lake Cumberland special right here. Um, I've always thought this. I have not used this in an octave, and I really think it's cool for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's a sweet piece of driftwood. It comes out of the top of the tank, which I don't know if I like or not. I've debated uh, cutting it down and keeping it a little lower. I like this angle here. I like it over here like this as well. So this is just a really, all right, so can I make this work? What, what do I like about this here? Well, I've got my open space here. I've got my um, my angle coming up here. It'll, it'll kind of pull the eye in and then take it on up and out the top. I could do some sort of floating wisteria or water sprite, which by the way, I hope you all noticed it was hilarious. I did two Sundays ago, I did uh, the difference between water sprite and wisteria. And then last week I messed up uh, calling water sprite water wisteria. So that just goes to show you. But um, yeah, so uh, could, could I do some stuff out the top? Unfortunately, this isn't a rimless tank. I've actually never done a rimless tank. I think they're pretty sweet though, but that would look real hot. So that's something that I'm playing with. And I want to show you finally, uh, if you're driftwood deprived, what you can do is uh, you can actually create your own kind of thing with the driftwood. And I'm going to 
show you how that is done here. So I've got all these pieces here, and I've, you know, I don't have enough here. I really want some height in this because it's got such a tall tank. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in here and I'm actually going to construct this to be looking like one big piece of driftwood. So I'm going to take it and set it here and kind of get this up here. And then I want to kind of place this um, something like, and you guys have saw this on the Facebook fan page on Friday where I'm kind of messing with that. So I like, I like that. I like, I like the hook there. I like this. And I'm, I'm fortunate these pieces are fitting together here um, like this. So I, I like the look of that. You know, a little bit of disruption here, but not too bad. Um, you could also go higher and kind of aim it up more. That's actually more how I had it. So I just want to show these. Um, and this, this you could spend hours like adjusting this. I actually was out here playing already, so I already had a kind of a game plan of what I was trying to do. But I really like that there. And that's actually not as good as I would have liked I originally had it. So I will keep playing. But it takes time to get your your look the way you really you really want it to go. I mean, this is not the hardscape is the hard part. Like I said, now that's a little more like it gives you a little more of that. And what you can do is when you get this rolling, you can soften all this with either a moss. Um, I wouldn't recommend moss though because it does once in your tank and never goes away. Uh, or more importantly, maybe like an Anubius or a Java fern would be good here. But that's the next video. So. That is what I'm doing. Uh, there we go. That's a little more like it. Little thing like I like how it comes and goes into the other side. Um, it's more about uh, next week's video, but that's that. That may be how I roll here. I would actually glue that with silicone to pull that all together. So uh, next week we're going to talk about plant selection, kind of goals with that, what you're going to do uh, with your plants, what plants you're thinking based on your setup. Uh, setup, abilities, fish, that sort of thing. So we're going to talk a lot about plant selection. We're also going to talk about lighting. And then in the final video, we're going to talk about what to expect with those plants, uh, final tweaks on the aquascaping, and then maintenance. So a little, little three-part series uh, going on for you. I'm excited about that. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe. Get on the top 10 plant and tank tips uh, down below if you aren't on that. I've had some great specials recently, uh, and I appreciate all your business from that. And uh, yeah, everybody make it a great week. Make, uh, make your Easter holiday great. And uh, yeah, tank on, folks. Later!